So your professional bodies in South Africa, we've spoken a little bit about Saika and Urba. We've spoken about the fact that Saika governs the requirements for you to qualify as a CA. Urba governs the requirements for you to qualify as an RA. In order for you to qualify, Saika requires at the very least that you pass CTA. Saika will give accreditation to universities on the basis of their ability to get you prepared for our first board exam, which is your ITC, your initial test of competence. And that is what we used to call your QE1, which I think a lot of people still think about as your QE1, or your board one, your first board exam. So, um, Psyche sets your board exam and obviously what that means is they want to understand whether you have the initial the, the requirements and the skills and the training and the education basically necessary to become one of their members. There are two board exams from 2014. Our second board exam will be the APC the assessment of professional competence and again this is what us as auditors used to write as PPE your um, your public practice exam and again we used to call that or most people refer to that as board two so in order to qualify as a ca you need your your cta your certificate in the theory of accounting which is done at a university at honors level you need your itc you need your apc and once you have passed these as well as a three-year contract as well as your three-year training period once you have signed those off c Psycho will allow you to register as a CA. At the moment, Urba says we believe that Psycho's criteria for you to pass and to become a CA is good enough for us. Therefore, if you are a CA, you are allowed to become and you are allowed to register as an RA as well. So Urba says they base their education on what Psyche bases the education on. So Urba believes that Psyche sets you up and provides you with the training and the academics necessary for you to qualify as a registered auditor. And again, your education, your training. When we talk about competencies, what we're saying is on a daily practical basis, are you able to apply your education to your training environment? And in your training contract, you have to be signed off on certain competencies. Are you able to perform the specific functions? Are you actually able to do this on a daily basis? And there are formal training competencies that have to be signed off before you actually are allowed to be registered as a CA. We look a little further. The pronouncements that you need to be aware of and be and you governed by is the Auditing Profession Act, your APA. This is set by Urba as the regulatory bodies for auditors in South Africa. So the APA, the Auditing Profession Act, governs how we behave as auditors, what our responsibilities, duties are, etc, etc. That governs that. We are bound by Companies Act and we need to be very aware of the Companies Act because our clients as companies are required to follow company law as well as the fact that the company actually governs when the auditors are required. So we've spoken already about the Public Interest Score. Your Companies Act governs when auditors are required and the statutory requirements of auditors. And since that affects us as we are auditors, we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of any bylaws and requirements for the constitution of Psyche, since we will be CAs as well. We need to be aware of any bylaws that Psyche gives us. Psyche and Urba codes, we talk about these as the code of professional conduct, making sure that we are aware of our professional requirements, the ability or the requirement to be objective, maintain confidentiality, professional behavior, integrity, professional competence and due care. We've got to make sure that we provide and we apply these professional skills in our daily lives because this is what the users trust. This is what they base their reliance on us on. Your international standards on auditing, we talk mostly about your ISAs, your, your independent or your international standards on auditing are the guidelines that we follow in South Africa in terms of our audit. You'll notice the I here stands for international, which means that these standards are applied internationally and in South Africa, Uber has decided that they equally apply to us and they have adopted these as the way that we do audit. So although they are international standards, they are not written specifically for South Africa, the South African audit and profession has decided that they apply to us and we will comply with them. If our clients are listed, we also need to be aware of the JSE listing requirements. So as an auditor, we need to make sure that we are aware of everything that our profession requires us. And if there's any laws and regulations that impact how we do our job or how we should be behaving, we're going to have to be aware of that. As an auditor, there are a lot of little bits and pieces of laws that we need to know to make sure that we fulfill our job as a professional properly.